everyone, Ed and I are in California and we had an amazing opportunity to check out some orb weaver spiders. However, we were only able to film the bee footage there because there were a lot of people around. So we figured we would film elsewhere and share with you a bunch of cool facts about orb weavers so that you can learn about them too. When you think of the word spider web, what you probably are envisioning is the traditional spider web used in Halloween decorations and it has that spiral in the middle. Those are the webs that are made by orb weavers and they're called orb weavers because the shape of their web is kind of a round or orb-like shape. The way that these webs are made is that a spider will take non-sticky silk and create the base of the web, which consists of a bunch of straight lines that all intersect in the middle. Then using sticky silk, they create a spiral all the way down into the center of that web. And the spiral is actually what insects will come into contact with and get stuck to. So orb weavers, unlike most spiders that only have two toes at the end of their legs, orb weavers have a bonus toe that helps them walk on the non-sticky parts of their webs so that they don't get stuck. Orb weavers actually live all around the world and there are over 3,000 species of them worldwide with about 180 species living in the United States. Today we are going to focus on three genuses or groups of orb weavers, the garden orb weavers, the golden silk orb weavers, and the spiny backed orb weavers. Let's start with the yellow garden spider. These are also called the black and yellow garden spiders or the zigzag or zipper spiders. They all belong in the genus Argiope and they live in pretty much all of North America. These are beautiful spiders with females reaching about two inches long. They have beautiful contrasting black and yellow colorations. Males on the other hand only get about three quarters of an inch long and they're brown. So females kind of get all the glory when it comes to the yellow garden spiders. One of the most notable things about this species though is how they build their web and how unique their web is. They usually construct a vertically oriented, almost two foot long in diameter web, and they have this zigzaggy pattern that runs down the middle of it. This zigzag is often why they're called the zigzag spider or the zipper spider, and that zigzaggy design is called a stabilimentum. This is where the garden spider usually sits, is directly in the middle of that stabilimentum. And there are currently three different theories as to what the stabilimentum does. Initially, scientists thought that, as the name implied, the stabilimentum provided stability to their web. However, recently, scientists have found that the stabilimentum actually reflects UV light, which has led them to a couple new theories as to what it does. First, we think that by reflecting UV light, it might attract insects into the web. And second, by reflecting UV light, that might deter birds from flying into the web and completely destroying it. So, similar to the UV reflecting stickers we often put on our windows to deter birds from flying into the window, yellow garden spiders kind of make their own version of that right in the middle of their web. A study in Guam on a couple islands actually showed that where garden spiders and birds coexisted, they created decent sized stabilimentums in their webs, but then thanks to the introduction of an invasive species, the bird populations declined, and so did the size of the stabilimentum in garden spiders' webs. So that's kind of making scientists think that it's more used to deter birds than attract insects, but if it does both at the same time, it's a win-win. Although the black and yellow garden spider might look intimidating because it is a good sized spider, they are completely harmless to humans and actually they're pretty docile too. They don't want to bite, they just want to catch bugs to eat and that makes them really good at pest control for gardens. And that's actually why they're called the garden spider is because they're often found around gardens and they're great to have in gardens because they eat those pests that would otherwise eat your plants. So instead of killing garden spiders, just let them be to do their work. Next, let's talk about a really impressive species of orb weaver, the golden silk orb weaver. Right next to me here is a golden silk orb weaver. They are a large species of spider, and they get the name because their silk is a light yellow or golden color. Now, we don't know why their silk is this color, but interestingly enough, their silk is one of the strongest silks of the orb weaver, so maybe it has something to do with that. These are also called banana spiders, and they are a very pretty species of spider in my opinion, and they live almost all over the world in warmer climates. There's only one species though that lives in the United States, and that is the Trichinophila clavipes, as seen here. 
This is a larger species than the yellow garden spider, which we just saw earlier, with females growing to up to three inches in diameter, and males growing to about an inch, and they're brown. So just like the yellow garden spiders, the males aren't anything to brag about. Males are not only smaller and less pretty, but they really drew the short stick overall because it's their job to find the females on their beautiful, elaborate webs, and if the female doesn't approve of the male, instead of mating with him, she'll just eat him. Females also construct larger webs than the yellow garden spider, with their being as large as three feet in diameter, and instead of having a vertically oriented web like the yellow garden spiders, the golden silk orb weaver's web is typically constructed at more of an angle. Similar to yellow garden spiders, the golden silk orb weaver is very docile, it's harmless, their, their venom is medically insignificant to humans. And my favorite thing about the golden silk orb weaver is that they come with leggings. Since they live in typically warmer climates, these fuzzy patches on their legs create more surface area for heat to dissipate from, thus cooling down their bodies. And the last group of orb weavers we're going to cover in today's video is the spiny-backed orb weavers. These belong in the genus Gasteracantha, and there's about 70 species worldwide at the moment that have been discovered. This one is Gasteracantha cantriformis, which, if you're a kid watching this video and you want to sound like a professional entomologist, learn how to say the scientific name Gasteracantha cantriformis and know that it's the spiny-backed orb weaver, and you'll you'll sound like a genius to anyone you tell that to. Like, that's an impressive scientific name, and it took me a while to learn even. This genus or group of spiders is very recognizable. The spiny-backed orb weavers have spines on their back or on their abdomen, and these six spines act as a line of defense for them to make them a little bit pokey if a predator were to try to eat them. As you can probably see, this is a much smaller species of orb weaver than the other two that we've been talking about. This one shown here is a female, and males are even smaller. In addition, their webs are smaller too. Their webs only are about 10 to 12 inches long. I mean, they're a smaller spider, so they can't create as big of a web as some of the bigger species of orb weavers. So there's a quick introduction to three genuses of orb weavers that you may not have known existed before, or you didn't know what they were called. I personally have seen a bunch of garden spiders growing up, and they always intimidated me because I was not a huge fan of spiders until I became an adult, and now that I know more about them, I can't wait to find a wild garden spider because I just want to see it up close again. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. There's a bug crawling on the lens right now, so apologies if he shows up. But thank you to our Patreon backers as well for making trips like this possible so we can teach you about new species of animals that we've never been able to cover on this channel before. And we'll see you next time! Those are the webs that are made by... Go away, fly. They belong in the genus Argyo... Go away. And second, they think that by reflecting UV light, they act... Yeah, I wouldn't know. Let's stop that one. Maybe we can just ride it out and then start... Golden silk orb weaver. These get their name from the color of... Oh. God. There's only one species, though, that lives in the United States, and that is the Trichinophila clavipes. What? <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Just wait till the next one. <laughs> Where are you going now? You're coming closer. Oh, turn around. <laughs> you turn. Just making rounds. Yep. Oh, gotta repair this spot right here. Okay. <laughs> Females also construct larger webs than the yellow garden spider, with theirs being about three feet in... with theirs... Uh, with theirs growing to... er... They are harmless. Their venom is not... Would you quit distracting me? Right. <laughs> quit picking leaves. <laughs> So there's a quick introduction to three genuses of orb weaver spiders. You gonna be okay? Yeah. You almost fell I, there. I almost... That would have been hilarious if you <laughs> no, fell. <laughs> it wouldn't have been. I'm trying so not to do that. Funny. Oh, that makes sense. So.